Okay, welcome back to Principles of Management, Chapter 6. This is the second part of the lecture. Hopefully I can get through uh, the remainder of the slides uh, in this uh, Part 2, as opposed to going to Part 3. So in performance evaluations and objective objectives, uh, negative consequences of avoiding a uh, performance review, so it decreases credibility of management, right? Do you have something to hide? Uh, reduces the organization's overall effectiveness. You need to tell people what they need to improve upon and also tell them what they're doing well. Uh, it wastes management's time and it decreases morale. And I've actually seen individuals do that before and not provide uh, performance evaluations. was not a good thing, uh, but, but it definitely occurs. Uh, so here's a sample employee evaluation form. I'll just increase that so you can kind of see it. Uh, you see as employee information, their uh, employee ID, their job knowledge, is it uh, poor, fair, satisfactory, good, excellent? Uh, you can also look at this as a scale of uh, a five, right? So it could be like one, two, three, four, five, and you just make your selections. Uh, now, what you should know when you do performance evaluation is that uh, nothing should be a surprise. You should be communicating with your associates or your employees uh, early and often in regards to the things that they, they don't do well uh, so that they can be corrected, at least give them a chance. Uh, individual performance review, you have preparation, document achievements, uh, organize as evidence of results gained, right? So you want to write down what people do uh, well. Don't just be the person that only writes down what they don't do well. Uh, what if the result is unfavorable? Was it truly unjustified? Are you just sensitive to criticism? Uh, justified schedule a follow-up appointment. Uh, right, and, and when we do evaluations and we receive them on the other end, so I give evaluations, but I also receive them from my from my manager. Uh, sometimes we can be, you know, fairly sensitive because they're talking about us, and we feel like we all go 100 percent, 100 percent of the time, which we definitely do not do. Uh, justify schedule follow up appointment. Uh, you want to talk about what you've learned. Uh, did you have clear goals and objectives such uh, that your performance was easy to document? So if you had clear uh, you know, goals and objectives, then it's easy to document it. And can you take away valuable information? You can always take away uh, valuable information. I've probably messed up uh, you know, uh, some performance evaluations here, here and there uh, from, from both sides in my, you know, in my early years. Uh, but you want to take something away from it and, and look to improve. Uh, so managing performance evaluations, you want to decide what you are hoping to achieve from the system, develop goals and objectives that inspire, challenge, and stretch people's capabilities. Like when they talk about stretch goals, you want to stretch their capabilities. Ensure that you have commitment from the top. Uh, ensure that all key staff are involved in the development of the performance management process uh, from the early phases. Uh, the performance management system is not linked to salary. Be sure employees are aware of it. So they must know and understand that, hey, you're not getting a raise because that's not what they do here. Maybe they do cost of living adjustments or, or COLAs. Uh, but, <clears throat> but every company does it a, a, a little bit differently. <clears throat> if the performance management system is not linked to salary, sorry, did that one, uh, provide additional training for supervisors on how to conduct the mid-year and year-end performance review. Sometimes uh, some companies do have mid-year as well, where they have two. A uh, company I work for, we only have one. Uh, plan to modify the performance management system over time, starting with goals and objectives to meet your organization's changing needs. And I can guarantee whatever organi organization you're in, they have changing needs because all companies do. More discussion questions, be sure to review those with yourself or your best friend or your dog or your cat or whatever you, uh, type of animal that you have that will speak back to you. Uh, the ultimate purpose. So goals and objectives should reinforce the organization's strategy with which ultimately achieves the vision and mission of the organization. Right, And that's what we ultimately want to do. We want to ultimately support the vision and the mission of the organization. Uh, so now we talk a little bit about corporate social responsibility. It may, may mean something different to some of you. Uh, but a business approach that creates long-term shareholder value by embracing opportunities and managing risks, deriving from economic, environmental, and social developments, right? Uh, can you help someone else, uh, uh, their, the economy of their company or the economy of the red cost by your donation? And environmental, uh, do you support things that are environmental? A company I used to work for, if I go down the 55 freeway, I look to the left and I see them and they have all solar panels on the top of their, uh, on the top of their company. So someone really committed to corporate social responsibility. And then after uh, <clears throat> environmental, we have social developments. 
uh, as defined uh, by Dow Jones. So you have five areas of competence. Strategy uh, incorporates triple bottom line. You have a solid financial planning, customer loyalty and product innovation, right? Keep the customers there and innovate in regards to what you sell. Uh, governance and stakeholder engagement and human resource management benefit options and overall job satisfaction. So measuring corporate social uh, performance. So let's just increase that so you can see. So let's check these out. Community strengths, uh, engagement in charitable giving, while involvement in tax controversies exemplifies a community concern. Uh, <clears throat> product quality safety strengths include actions such as establishment of a well document, a well developed and also documented quality program. While concerns arise if a firm uh, receives fines slated to product quality and or safety. Diversity uh, strengths include progressive uh, programs uh, for the employment of the disabled, whereas uh, fines or civil penalties that uh, result from an affirmative action uh, uh, constitute a concern. Right, So we're looking at the good and the bad. Strike, a no layoff policy is a strength in regard to employee relations, while poor union relations are a concern. Right, uh, so if I have a no layoff policy, that's I'd probably feel pretty secure about being at that company. Environmental strengths include engaging in recycling, uh, while concerns arise when penalties uh, for air or water violations are uh, documented. And corporate governance strengths include equitable levels of compensation for top management and board members, while concerns are raised if controversies. Uh, related to accounting, transparency, and uh, political accountability are discovered, and they, they, you know, they are frequently in these days. Uh, you know, see so many things with with Enron, Tyco, Adelphia, things of that nature. Uh, so they, uh, they all come out uh, back in the day. A lot of people didn't know that there was anything such as white collar crime. Uh, some more discussion questions. Uh, what does corporate social responsibility mean? You should be able to answer all of these. Go through them. They may just help you on your quiz. Organizational and personal scorecards. As with an organization's mission and vision, uh, your personal mission and vision reflect who you are and where you want to go. Which values and principles guide your way? Like what, what's the guiding factor? Is it money? Is it comfortability? Things of that nature. Uh, what are your most deeply cherished aspirations, right? Maybe you don't tell everybody those things. And how do you distinguish yourself in society and among your peers and family, right? So ask yourself those questions. And we have organizational and personal scorecards continued. Goals and roles are set out with respect to the areas of financial, uh, others, uh, individual strengths, and learning and growth. Uh, financial captures your needs and aspirations about money as well as financial obligations. Others reflect goals uh, that you have uh, <clears throat> that you have in relation to other individuals uh, or society at large. How do you want to be seen? Right. Do you want to be seen as the bad guy or do you want to be seen as, uh, you know, somebody that's uh, uh, well liked and well loved? Individual strengths represent the internal perspective, reflecting goals related to your health and well-being. And learning and growth uh, refer to your skills, abilities, and aims with regard to personal and professional learning and growth. So creating SMART goals. And if you remember, I referenced what a SMART goal uh, was a little bit earlier. Well, this is it. So, specific. Uh, Coca-Cola is seeking to improve its water efficiency by a specific amount. 20%. That's very specific. Uh, in contrast, goals such as do your best are vague, making it difficult to decide if a goal is actually achieved or reached. Measurable. Water efficiency can be calculated so Coca-Cola is able to track its progress relative to its 20% target. If progress is slow, more resources can be devoted to achieving this goal. <clears throat> And aggressive. Uh, a series of research studies have established that performance is strongest when goals are challenging but attainable, right? So they're challenging, but they're also attainable. It's not just like, hey, Demetrius, just want you to jump from planet Earth to the moon. Uh, <clears throat> work by Coca-Cola, but the goal can actually be reached. And they also have to be, uh-oh, went too far. They also have to be realistic, and that, that just makes sense, right? Don't give me a crazy goal like I want you to sell 100 cars in one day. 
Uh, if Coca-Cola water efficiency goals are 95% improvement, Coca-Cola's employees would probably react with some surprise. Uh, reaching a goal must be feasible in order for employees to embrace it. Unrealistic goals make most people give up. And basing goals on impossible cliches such as give 110% creates confusion. And I can understand why. And they also need to be time bound. Uh, Coca-Cola is seeking to art, uh, to achieve its 20% improvement by 2012. Some universities such as Texas Tech University uh, provide incentives including preferred scheduling for students who sign contracts agreeing to graduate on a four year schedule, right? So you just sign a contract to agree to sign to, to graduate in, in four years. Uh, deadlines such as these are motivating and they uh, create accountability, right? Which makes a lot of sense. All right, and here we go. So let's let's check out our guy right here. Specific. Do you create explicit rather than vague goals for yourself? Can you help you? To, it, this can help you to target your energy towards what is an important, what is important, right? So you want to focus. You want to um, be specific in regards to your goals. Measurable. Quantifying your goals allows you to track your accomplishments over time and can help to reduce stress. For example, meeting a goal of uh, I'll write a page every day might uh, prevent panic uh, <clears throat> the night before an important project is due. Aggressive. Creating aggressive educational goals. Maintaining a 3.5 GPA is likely to lead to a higher performance than minimal goals. Right? I just want to pass all my classes. and I know that's definitely not any of you. Uh, realistic to better understand your prospects in the job market uh, consider researching what kinds of jobs are common for your major and experience level and then they also have to be time bound uh, time management is a challenge in today's world if you tend to procrastinate uh, setting interim deadlines for yourself might <coughs> help you uh, to stay on schedule all right, let's shrink it back down. Honey, I shrank the kids. And last but not least is your slide on discussion questions. Remember to go over these. They are very beneficial. We'll probably help you on your quiz. We'll probably help you on, uh, on your assignments. Uh, what can you achieve by applying the concept of a balanced scorecard uh, to your personal situation? Right. Remember, the keyword is a balanced uh, scorecard. Uh, how similar or different does the scorecard seem uh, to function at an individual level as opposed to an organizational level. So remember to go through those questions. Uh, you know, feel free to, to refer back to the book. Uh, you will definitely find the answer and then it will be ingrained and processed and stay in your brain forever. So as always, uh, this is Demetrius Wilson for Principles of Management, Chapter 6. This is uh, Lecture Part 2. Lecture Part 1 was posted before this. Uh, hopefully it didn't put you too far to sleep. Uh, and I will speak with you uh, when we get to chapter 7.